Hey guys, it's Ed Turbo Bud here. I've taken in a load of old rubbish today. A pair of the Nike Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. I picked up the black and white colorway because everybody on earth has got the other one. Will I be sipping on the sweet nectar of my memories in the Pegasus Turbo or drowning in a sea of recycled Zumax foam? Let's dive in. Thanks for joining me on the channel. Please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of new videos. Also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. It really helps out the channel. Danke schön. Straight into the review on this one, no messing about. I picked up the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature with my own Earth credits. So you get my honest opinions as per usual. You just do regardless. No matter how I get hold of the shoe. Uh, disappointing 300 grams here, my UK size 11, US size 12. That's about 10.6 ounces, if that's your sort of thing. That makes it over 44 grams heavier than the Pegasus Turbo 2 in my size. That's about 1.5 ounces heavier. So certainly moving in the wrong direction there already. I did measure the outsole surface area and width. It's pretty much the same as the Pegasus Turbo 2. Although we have a slightly less narrow feel in the arch area of the shoe slightly more width in the heel it's not by much though quite marginal so still moving in the same direction as nike's recent obsession with outsole surface area a retail cost of 145 earth credits for this one that makes it a more expensive shoe really than most people probably would consider picking up on a whim there was a performance offering i suppose you'd expect it to be a little bit more expensive but don't tell anyone but it really isn't a performance model 55 percent of the midsole foam is recycled zoom x apparently from stuff that's sort of fallen onto the factory floor i'd like to think that some of it's from shoes that have been sent back to nike and they've sort of ground them up and used that i have no further information on those sorts of things though interestingly only eight percent of the outsole is recycled apparently you can see there's some speckly bits in the rubber i would assume that that's from other bits of shoe that have been ground up so if recycling is your game then this shoe could be right up your street. As per usual with my reviews, we will start with the upper first. 10 miles today, 16.1 kilometers, on a pretty typical long run route for me, although I did throw in lots of different reps in there. There's some one minute reps at half marathon pace with a couple of minutes of recovery. And then later I switched that round, so two minute reps at my half marathon pace with a minute recovery. You know, just taking it nice and easy on the long run. Yeah. I only had so much time, I'd promised my daughter that we'd go out and do some fun stuff today. So that's what is most important. I'm not going to spend four or five hours out there, you know, bimbling around. It's just not going to happen. 10 miles enough to get some initial views into this one. I think about a mile was actually. And I pretty much knew what this shoe was all about. Now, this shoe is very, very difficult to get on foot. You're definitely going to want to bring your shoe horn. The upper is quite rough. It's coarse. It's very rigid, overly padded in the heel there. Very dissimilar to the Pegasus Turbo 2. That was super low profile in the heel. It felt quite sleek and nimble. There's absolutely no give to the opening of the shoe here. So it really is quite tough to get it on. It's got a shallow and inflexible toe box here. If you want a bit of height there, go look somewhere else. This shoe isn't for you. And there's no extra eyelets at the top there to facilitate a runner's knot. So if you want to use one of those, you're going to have to get your hole punch out. If you'd like to be able to adjust the lace tension over the top of your foot, this shoe again isn't for you. Just pick up the Pegasus standard model instead. Nike have strangely still included standard length laces here in the pegasus turbo next nature you don't need them and basically what ends up happening is you've got loads and loads of excess lace there just replace the laces basically i don't know what they think people are going to do with them like wrap them around the bottom of the shoe maybe i mean get your scissors out or something like that there's loads of weird things in this upper that i need to show you i haven't seen anybody else mention them yet just at the back of the shoe there there's these weird holes i've absolutely no idea why they're there there's about four of them here just on the heel section of the shoe and who knows why they're there there's a lot of things about this upper that are a real mystery to me another bit i'll try and show you on the camera there's some extra stitching here on the tongue it doesn't seem to do anything or attach anything who knows of all the shoes that you probably want a pull tab on it's this one and there isn't one it felt okay once i got it on foot a little bit restrictive perhaps not the most comfortable upper the pegasus 39 is by far the better upper of the two this one's supposed to be like a nimble and lightweight sort of 
alternative to that. There's a bit of pressure there around the front of the foot for me, which I haven't had on any other shoe. The shoe is true to size in terms of length, so if you do want to pick it up, go with your standard Nike size. There is a really rigid heel counter in here. I'm not entirely sure that it's needed, and there's loads of padding back here as well. It really is a sweat sucker. I can imagine if you wore these in the wet, it would actually soak up quite a bit of moisture there. I mean, it's okay in the cooler summer temperatures we've got at the moment. When some of that wet weather starts to come in, I can see this one being a bit of a problem in terms of the upper. The Pegasus Turbo 2 upper felt like a performance shoe, it was a little bit more forgiving. It had quite a nice large toe box. This isn't the case here. It does feel like they've just got a load of spare materials and cobbled something together. I mean, it ties up and it works as an upper, but there's a lot of things here that just aren't really needed. It just feels as if they're deliberately nerfing the shoe once again with this pretty poor upper. I managed to run 10 miles in it. It was okay. Nothing to write home about. I'm going to give it a 1.7 out of 3 after my initial run for the upper. Just find the Pegasus 39 more comfortable and usable in that respect, really. Midsole now. Midsole wise, we have a similar squash here to the Zoom Fly 5, and that's no surprise really, it's a similar setup. Though it's a little bit less rigid, we do have a little bit more of that Zoom X feel here. I wouldn't say they've cranked it up though to 11, it's probably like a four out of ten something like that there is actually a layer of fresh zoom x on top of the crushed up zoom x scraps here it's a bit more visible on the medial side of the shoe here it is hiding away strangely in hand the actual sr02 material that's the carrier for the zoom x here is a lot more squashy and compressive than the zoom x itself in short the rides similar to the pegasus turbo 2 but in no way as forgiving or exciting. And really with a running shoe, you want it to be quite exciting. You want it to be enjoyable. And it's a bit of a facsimile of that. It's like a photocopy that's been done about 20 times of the shoe. It only bears a few similarities really in terms of the actual performance of the previous version. I did get the Pegasus Turbo 2 on foot earlier in the week, just to refresh my mind on it felt a lot more nimble than this did and the big problem I have with this shoe is the inconsistencies in terms of the foam across the two shoes in my pair. The right shoe just feels like it's on a slope almost from right to left. At first I thought I hadn't put my sock on properly but then I realised it was in fact the shoe. This is further compounded by the huge number of layers that we've actually got inside this shoe. The first layer is a crushed up Zoom X insole. You then got this sort of fabric strobal board that they've used which they actually stitch on all the other parts to. Obviously then you've got a fresh layer of Zoom X, the crushed Zoom X, and some SRO2 underneath that. Overall, I think putting Zoom X on the side of the shoe is a little bit cheeky. Yeah, Zoom X is in there, but it's only a part of what you actually get. There's a load of glue and some other foam, some fabric stuff, a bit more crushed Zoom X and glue as your insole. So yeah, maybe they could write all of that on the side of the shoe. Right off the bat, these just felt a little bit off balance, I suppose. It did even out a little bit towards the end of the run, or maybe I was just compensating for it with my other foot. But for a shoe that cost 145 Earth credits, it's pretty poor really, isn't it? Don't get me wrong, using these Zoom X scraps and recycling them into something new is a great idea, but in terms of actual running performance, if you're going to spend that money, you want something that works well out the box and this just doesn't. At half marathon reps, it felt like I was putting in lots of effort to get there. It was stable enough at some easier paces of around about 8 minutes per mile. It's just a pretty inconsistent midsole for me from heel through to toe. The distribution of the foam is a little bit off and it makes me wonder whether this provides really any additional benefit to what you would get from picking up the Pegasus 39. The answer for me is actually no, it doesn't really, certainly financially, and I think the Pegasus 39 is a more versatile midsole now. Those dual airbags really work, and that slightly softer React foam, that's the way forward. I'm gonna give this a 1.5 out of three for the midsole after my initial run. Outsole now. Perfectly serviceable on my initial run. It's probably the best part of the shoe, really. Though we still have a slight problem. You can see that the outsole itself is actually curved upwards towards the middle of the shoe. I've actually seen this on a number of Nike shoes recently. 
don't know whether it's whether applying the rubber to the shoe is kind of stretching out the midsole somewhat. Either way, kind of feels a bit weird underfoot. Had this in the Pegasus 39 and also the Rival Fly 3 earlier in the year. There is a big wedge of exposed midsole material here. It's that SRO2 foam, which seems relatively durable, but it's right there in that sort of back section of the shoe it's going to actually take a bit of a pounding and you're going to get some abrasion there sooner or later. The very thin outsole rubber here is no match for a more technical trail. Probably be okay on some gravel and stuff like that, but I think it's really aimed at being used on road and pavements. It felt good on those. I only tested them in dry conditions. There's a hosepipe ban here at the moment and a drought here in the UK. Any rain that falls just seems to evaporate in a few seconds. So hopefully I can test it out in some wet conditions very soon. The rubber here does appear to have some sort of recycled content in it, a little bit like what we saw in the Pegasus 39. When I wore that rubber down, you could see these little white speckles in there. Very strange. Although very useful to be able to tell where the rubber's actually been worn. I don't think this one's to be quite as durable as the Pegasus 39. We do have a very thin stretched rubber here. The 39's got some more Tom Cruise like lugs on there. This one's a little bit more like Rodney Trotter than anything else. As such I think the Pegasus 39's a probably more usable versatile shoe if you're going to do a little bit of off-road rambling. Can't really compare this one up against the Pegasus Turbo 2. The outsoles are completely different. It's like comparing apples and oranges in that respect. No major issues for me on my initial run with the outsole. It's probably the best bit of the shoe, really. 2.5 out of 3 after my initial run. We've got to talk value now. So 145 Earth credits is big money really for this shoe and it really falls flat. It doesn't have the same pop or feel as the Pegasus Turbo 2. In pretty much every single way, I think the Pegasus 39 is a better shoe to pick up and it's cheaper. Don't think there's much in it weight wise either now. They've made the Pegasus 39 a little bit lighter from the last iteration. I don't really think you gain anything performance wise here in the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. If you ask me, this shoe is Nike's attempt at making some sort of ultra boost but for the swoosh some sort of knit upper with no chance of a runner's knot crushed up foam material here in a sort of pellet like style relatively minimal outsole rubber it's more a lifestyle shoe i think really casually will i want to wear it around the pool table Probably not, actually. There's just too many opportunities for packing foam jokes. All the glue and extra stuff here just nerfs that magic Zoom X feel. And I think most people will probably pick up the Pegasus 39 if they want a daily trainer. It's just another Nike shoe that we don't really need. A bit like the Streetfly. In fact, it's a firmer, more overbuilt version of the Streetfly that's 100 grams heavier. I'm going to give this a 1.7 out of 3 for value after my initial run. So if I've totaled the scores out correctly, that gives us a 7.4 out of 12 after my initial run for the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. Probably one of the biggest shoe letdowns ever on the channel. There is literally no comparison to be had here if you ask me. Absolute banger of a shoe and yeah. It might work brilliantly for some people. Let me know if you are one of those people down in the comments. It's musical interlude time. Our musical interlude today comes courtesy of Jonathan Richmond once again. This one's very, very poignant though. Coming towards the end of the summer and you start thinking about all the things you perhaps did or perhaps didn't do, things you wanted to do things other people wanted to do. As you get older, you think, did I make use of the summer? You know, did I really enjoy it? I constantly have that feeling, you know, every year. And the song, That Summer Feeling by Jonathan Richmond captures that exactly. You know, do you remember those summers when you were younger? You had no responsibilities. You had no people breathing down your neck about this, that, or the other. That summer feeling's gonna haunt you for the rest of your life. Oh man, what lyrics. If you haven't checked out Jonathan Richmond, You've been missing out, people. But if you wait till you're older, a sad resentment will smolder in you. What I'm trying to say, people, is go out and do those things that you want to do. Go and see that girl that you love. Go and tell her that you love her. If you haven't seen your folks in a while, like your mum or your dad, your brother, your sister, ring them, talk to them. How are they doing? 
go and have a drink with them take them a bottle of lemonade take your dog out for a walk in the field where you haven't been let them run around and enjoy all the plants and smells write a letter to somebody you haven't seen in a while perhaps lives over the pond somewhere i think we're really bad at like putting off some of these things and oh, i'll do that tomorrow i'll do that tomorrow i'll just sit here and sort of go on the internet every year i get that summer feeling like i should have done this i should have done that have i used the time hopefully i'll get there one day where i can successfully say yes i've used all that time i really had that summer feeling there i don't have any sort of regrets about it because you know our loved ones are only there for so long aren't they you gotta try and enjoy all that time as much as you possibly can go and check it out guys that summer feeling by jonathan richmond thanks for tuning in people i hope you've enjoyed today's review that fantastic shoe hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications drop me a super thanks as well if you've got a specific question you want me to answer about the pegasus turbo next nature or anything else for that matter make sure you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you